Kia ora. welcome back to another episode of Technically Speaking. So in my last video I helped to demystify the new NZTA M1A performance binder specification. If you haven't watched this yet, go check that out. Today we're going to go more in depth into one of the key tests for the high temperature properties of the binders. This is the Multi-Stress Creep Recovery Analysis, or MSCR for short. So if I was to sum the test up in one sentence, it would be let's stretch a binder multiple times at high temperatures and see how much it bounces back after each stretch. So why is this important? This tells us the binder's ability to resist deforming permanently or rutting under load at high temperatures. Now let's get into the detail of the process of the test. When a bitumen is exposed to air, it gradually oxidizes over time, which makes the binder harder. We also term this as aging. The hotter the temperature it's exposed to, the quicker this aging occurs. So the first lot of aging that happens to a bitumen is during the manufacture of the ash valve when it's exposed to the high temperatures of the drum and aggregates up until the point it's paved. So with the MSCR test, we want to understand the performance of the binder after it has been laid. So to do that, we need to artificially age the fresh binder. We do this with the rolling thin film oven, or RTFO. So let's go take a look. So we take these glass jars and we add a sample of the binder to it. We add enough to create a thin film on the inside of the jar. These jars are then set up in the rolling thin film oven and the chamber is heated to 163 degrees. So they go in the carousel and the carousel spins around and air is pumped into the jars as it spins. So it holds it at this temperature and with air pumping into it for an hour and a half. So after an hour and a half, we take the samples out of the oven. So what comes out of here is more representative of the binder in an asphalt pavement once it has been laid. This is the binder we then perform the multi-stress creep recovery test on. So we then move on to the next step, which is actually measuring the performance of the sample. So this test is done using the dynamic shear rheometer, or DSR for short. These instruments are used to measure the way in which a binder flows in response to applied forces. So it can characterise the viscous and elastic behaviour at various temperatures. As I explained in the NZTA M1A video, bitumen is viscoelastic, which means it behaves both viscously and elastically. How much behaves like one or the other is dependent on things like temperature, speed of loading, and the actual makeup of the bitumen. Again, if you haven't seen the other video yet, go check it out, where I demonstrate this in more detail. So let's take a look at the principles behind the test. I'll use this elastic to help demonstrate it. So we take a sample of bitumen, or the elastic, and the first thing we know is its length at rest. We apply a force to the sample. This is what we call stress. If the stress is great enough, it will cause the sample to stretch. So the length of the sample, when the stress is applied, is now different to when it started. So that difference is what we call strain. Now when we remove the stress on the sample, one of three things will happen. One, the sample will stay the same length, no recovery. Two, the sample will bounce back to where it started, which is total recovery. Or three, the sample will retract somewhere in between, partial recovery. The only difference to what I'm demonstrating here to how the DSR works is how the load is applied. So rather than a linear stretch, it applies a rotational force to the sample. The MSCR test does this stretch and recovery 10 times at both a low stress of 0.1 kilopascals and a high stress of 3.2 kilopascals. It stretches for one second and allows it to recover for nine seconds for each of those cycles. The non-recoverable creep for each cycle is the difference between where it started and where it ended up after the recovery. So the higher the non-recoverable creep, the less elastic it is, meaning more risk of deforming permanently. Dividing this non-recoverable creep by the stress applied gives you what's called the JNR value. We end up with a JNR value for each of the low and high stresses. These are JNR 0.1 and JNR 3.2. So the spec has a maximum limit on the JNR 3.2 value, which is the highest stress test. So for each binder grade, standard, heavy, very heavy and extreme, you want to make sure it has enough elasticity for the potential traffic load on it. So the heavier the traffic, the more you need your binder to resist moving up the loading. The spec is the same for the four traffic levels, no matter which performance grade. 
It's just the testing temperature that changes. So that's PG52, PG58 and PG64. So this takes a bit of thought when you're trying to understand how the different binders fit into each category. If we take heavy binder grade as an example, it has a JNR 3.2 spec of 2.0 maximum. So we take a binder and we test this at 58 degrees Celsius for a PG58. Let's say we get a JNR 3.2 value of 1.9. Great, we meet the spec for a PG58H. If we now find out that another site where this binder is to be used requires a PG64H, and we test the same sample now at 64 degrees, it will likely fail. This is because now the bitumen is that much softer when tested 6 degrees above the previous test. What we need to do is move to a harder grade of binder to pass the spec at 64 degrees. As you move up through the temperatures, the binder grades start moving toward the lighter end and you need to switch to harder or more elastic bitumens as the temperature rises. So there we have it, the multi-stress creep recovery test. To summarise, we take a sample of bitumen, artificially age it through the rolling thin film oven, set it up on the dynamic shear rheometer and apply a force to it, let it relax. And what we're looking for is the non-recoverable creep. How much does it not want to come back to where it started? So that gives us a good indication of how a binder will behave under certain loads and whether it will permanently deform or rut. Thanks for watching this Technically Speaking. I hope it's helped give a bit of clarity to one of the main high temperature tests in the new NZTA M1A specification. See you all next time.